Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna do another dive into Patcher. We're gonna get a little bit more complex. We're gonna create this beautiful little plugin here. This is something that's very handy for just trying to get some more natural loudness out of your mix, especially if you are the type of person who just does some home mastering on your own system before uploading your tracks to SoundCloud. You want to get louder tracks, but you don't wanna just compress the hell out of it and sacrifice your sound. This is gonna be useful to you. But more than that, this tutorial will hopefully go through some things that people have been requesting quite a bit in the comments. And some of those things that we're gonna take a look at today, you can see this is, this here's what we're building. People have multiple times requested not just a bypass switch for the overall sound, but also bypass switch for individual parts of the plugin. With this plugin that we're gonna to make today, we will have that. We have on off switches for each part of the plugin, as well as an overall bypass for the entire thing. I've also had people ask for user interface design. So you can see we're gonna design a user interface that looks like this. And I am gonna give you some tips on how to get like these little icons and stuff into your patcher design, which is a little bit tricky to do. So hopefully you find this tutorial helpful, even if you're not interested in pumping up the volume using expansion and soft clipping, I think you'll still get a lot out of this because putting this together, there's a lot to learn. If you are completely new to Patcher or you're finding some of this confusing or I'm going a little bit too fast, I recommend checking out my video on how to make a simple bypass button because in that one, I go through things step by step, very simple. In this video, I will try and explain everything as I go, but I'm going to kind of assume that you already know a little bit about Patcher at least. All right, let's jump in. Start by opening up a blank Patcher. Now, before I get designing, there's a couple little things that I usually like to do. Number one is I don't like this mini map. I don't use it and it's just visually distracting. So right click, view, and turn off the mini map. The other thing that I like to do is right click and choose remember tab sizes. What this means is when I'm over here in my surface designing you know, the user interface and I resize the patcher window, I don't want it to keep that smaller size when I click back to the map because then all my stuff that I'm trying to work on is squished or I lose my view. So. Remember tab sizes is, is very handy. I'm gonna start by throwing in two wave shapers. So you need two of these. Um, Fruity Wave Shaper is a super underrated plugin and it's gonna be the core of both of the effects that we're building today. Uh, so I'm gonna duplicate this. I just right click, choose save preset as, and I drag another one in. And for now I can disconnect both of these because we'll be connecting them up differently later. This one I'm going to name Expander and this one Soft Clipper. Not gonna mess around with them just yet. We'll get into that in a little bit. But for now, I am going to enable the mix knob input. So right click, choose inputs, parameters, mix level. You'll see that adds a new little red dot here. And basically what that means is this handy mix knob here, we can link that to a knob on our user interface. Uh, I'll do the same on the soft clipper. Right click, inputs, parameters, mix level. So while Wave Shaper does have a handy mix knob, you'll notice it doesn't have a threshold knob. And so that can be a bit of a problem, especially when your input sound is too quiet. It won't be loud enough to trigger what we're doing here in the Wave Shaper. So we are going to need to fake a threshold knob. If you want a deeper dive into that, I did a video on it. But the basic idea is if we boost the gain before the Wave Shaper and then reduce the gain by the same amount after, it basically has the same effect as a threshold knob. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a parametric EQ2. So here's my EQ2. The reason I do this one is because it has 15 decibels worth of gain booster reduction. So I'm just going to disable all these bands here. Don't need them. We just need the main level to disable all those bands. Just leave it at zero. And I'm going to duplicate this three times. One for before and after the expander and then one each for before and after the uh, soft clipper. So this is going to boost our signal, then it goes through the expander, and then this is gonna reduce the signal again. Same over here, boost, soft clip, reduce. Just to keep things organized, I'm gonna rename this one expander threshold, and this is expander threshold two. This one is gonna be clip threshold and clip threshold two. Now in each of these EQs, I want to enable the main level control so that I can attach that to a knob. So I'm gonna right click, inputs, parameters, all the way down at the bottom is main level. Do the same for each one. Inputs, parameters, main level. Inputs, parameters, main level, and same thing here. 
Now for each of these, you can see that we can now control the main level with this little red dot here, which means we can link it up to a control on our surface later. Now for the main signal coming into patcher and out of patcher, we do want to have a bypass. And as well, we want to bypass for each individual section here. So that's going to take a lot of fruity balances. We're actually going to need six. So I got my fruity balances. Once again, I'm just going to duplicate a bunch of them. Just disconnect that one. So we need two fruity balances for each bypass switch. So here I'm going to have, I'm going to rename this wet. That's the wet signal. This one is going to be the dry bypass. And this one we can just link straight to FL Studio. Over here, it's going to be the same thing. This one here is going to be the bypass for the expander. So rename that bypass expander. And this one here is going to be the bypass for the clipper. Bypass clip. This one here is going to be the wet for the expander and the wet for the clipper. Now I've got those all set up. I still want to have an output gain knob that lets me adjust my levels after we've gone through the entire effects. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with the parametric EQ. I'm just going to duplicate it again. And this one I'm going to rename output gain. And I'm also going to enable the main level parameter. And output gain is also going to go straight out to FL Studio. We've got the basic components set up here, but we are going to need an XYZ controller at a few different spots to just control the input from the surface as it goes into the, the various little red buttons here. I'm actually going to want five different XYZ controllers. I'm going to need one that controls the overall wet dry. I'm going to need one that controls the wet dry for the expander, one for the wet dry on the clipper. I'm also going to need one to control the threshold of the expander and again, the threshold of the clipper. So let's take a look at this one first. This one is the bypass control and it needs its X and Y inputs and outputs turned on. Again, if you want a deeper explanation of this, check out my bypass video. It uh, goes over in fairly simple language exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, but I got my X and my Y's all set. I'm going to need to control the volume of each of these fruity balances. So I'm going to turn on my inputs parameters volume for each of those. Inputs parameters volume. Now you will see that when fruity balance is at 0 dB, at 0 gain or boost, it's actually at a value of 80%. So what I need to do is take a switch from my control surface that's either going to be 0 or 100, and I need to turn that into 0 or 80. So here in my XYZ controller, and change to output mapping. Here in the X, I'm going to set this first dot, type in value 80, or I could just do paste value 80% because I copied it earlier. But I want that to be 80, and this side to be 0. And in the Y, I want the opposite. I want this side 0, and I want this side at 80%. The reason for that is when the button in my control surface is set to off, it's going to send a signal of zero. It's going to be over here, which means that I want my wet volume to be at 80% and I want my dry volume to be at 0%. When I click the button, it's going to be at 100. It's going to be over on this right hand side, which means I want my dry to be at 80, but my wet to be turned off to be at zero. Last thing to do here is turn global speed down to zero. This is actually global smoothness. We don't want smoothing. It will mean that when you click the button, the effect doesn't happen instantaneously. We actually don't want that to happen, so turn it down all the way. This one's set up. I'm gonna connect the X to the wet and the Y to the dry. I'm gonna do the same thing basically on these four now. This one here I'm going to rename as expander control. This one is expander threshold. This one here is clip control. This one is clip threshold. I'm going to enable X and Y on each of these inputs and outputs. I'll just speed up. I'm doing the same thing on each one. And now I'm going to go into each one and modify the graph as needed, just like I did over here on the bypass control. So for the expander bypass control, once again, set it to output mapping, turn down the global speed. With this one, I want the user to click the button to turn things on. So when the button is off, when the button's at zero, I want the wet to be at zero. So this is good. This one, I'm just gonna type in 80. With the Y, the Y is the dry. When the button's off, I want the dry to be at 80%. And I want when the button is on, the dry to turn off completely. So my curves for 
this XYZ should look like this. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing here over on the clipper, the bypass control. Output mapping, global speed down, uh, pace value 80%, and then the Y, pace value 80%, and bring that down. Looks good. I am now gonna enable volume parameter input on each of these fruity balances so I can now control them. Input parameter volume, input parameter volume. Okay, should be good. I'm gonna connect this one to the wet. And I'm gonna connect the Y to the dry. Same over here. Connect the X to the wet, connect the Y to the dry. With the threshold, it's a little bit different than using fruity balance. You can see on these EQs, right in the middle, 50% is no boost or decrease in volume. So I want to set my threshold here in the output mapping. Oh, don't forget your global speed. Threshold knobs generally start at 100% and then you decrease them. So I want, in the X control, I want to start at 50. I want the, the threshold knob at max to be right in the middle, no change. And then as I decrease it, it's going to get louder. Opposite over here in the Y. At full threshold knob, I want to start at 50, but as I decrease the knob, I want the gain to decrease. I'm going to connect this X to the first threshold EQ, and I'm going to connect the Y to the second one. So the idea is as we turn down that knob, this one gets louder and this one gets quieter by an identical amount. I'm going to do the same over here in the clipping threshold. Set coordinates to output mapping, turn down my global speed all the way. I am going to take the 100% side and put it at 50, and the low side goes up to 100. In the Y, it's the opposite. Start at 50, but go down to zero. Looks good. I can hook up the X to my first threshold one and my Y to my second one. Before we start designing our user interface, it's time to do some audio routing. So right away, you can see we've already got our dry bypass. Go straight to FL Studio. We'll also send the audio from FL into the wet fruity balance. And from there, we need to go into this plugin chain. If our expander switch is off, we need to bypass. So I need to connect on audio route here. But if my expander switch is on, I need the audio to go to the wet. So I'm actually going to connect both of these. From the wet, if I have turned on the expander, the audio needs to then go into the threshold, go into the wave shaper, from the wave shaper back into the next threshold. From here, our audio goes into the next plugin area. Let's say I had the expander on, the audio would be coming out here. And if I turned on my clipper, the audio needs to go there. But if my clipper's turned off, the audio needs to go to the bypass. So I'm going to connect both of them. Same thing down here. If I have my expander turned off, my audio is coming out here. I could have my expander bypassed, but my clipper on. So I need to connect that. But I could also have both bypassed. So I need to connect from here to there. It looks a little confusing, but you'll see that coming out of a wet plugin chain, or the dry, both the wet and the dry need to be connected to the wet and the dry on the next plugin chain. If I have my clipper turned on, the audio is gonna be coming out of that fruity balance. It goes into the threshold, goes into the wave shaper, back to the threshold, and then to my output gain knob. Same for here, if I'm bypassing the clipper, the audio is gonna come out here and it needs to go to my output gain knob. Our audio is all routed now. Take a close look. It looks confusing and spaghetti-ish all over the place, but really what's going on is just that with the bypass switches or with the on-off switches, you need to account for audio could be going through this plug-in chain or it could be completely bypassing this plug-in chain and going through this fruity balance. And that's why we need audio coming out of here and out of here. Same here. We need the audio coming out of the wet signal as well as coming out of the bypass area here. All right, now it's time for some user interface design. That's all gonna happen in the surface, which we will connect using this thingy here, but you can also directly design things using this tab here for the surface. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this little dot. I don't need MIDI data coming through this plugin and I don't like having extra dots just making things visually muddy. So I'm gonna go here and turn off MIDI output. You see that green dot disappears. As I add buttons or knobs, red dots will start to appear here that I can then connect to the various parameters that I want to control. Going over to surface. One little tip that I can give you is these buttons here can be handy, but you don't need them. And when you're done designing your user interface, they actually look bad, they get in the way. So you can turn those off by right clicking and deselecting show buttons. Now they're gone. But at any point I can still right click and choose edit. And then I can add whatever knobs I want and I can slide things around, all that kind of stuff. 
Before I do that, I'm gonna open up Control Creator. Control Creator looks like this, and it's an app included with FL Studio that lets you design your own knobs and, and sliders and buttons. It's not super user-friendly. I just find it's a little confusing sometimes because depending on what styles or selections you've made, some of these options won't do anything. And so it takes a lot of trial and error to get something you like. But when I'm designing, I generally tend to go for designs that are clean, simple, and have an accent color that's fairly bold. Patcher tends to lend itself to that sort of design not too much in the way of bright colors or you're just going to overdo things but mostly muted or desaturated colors uh, lots of grays some of my designs that i've made i really like this sort of look it's clean it looks elegant it's got this really nice sort of blue color I'm gonna use that. When you're building in Control Creator, you can drag straight into Patcher using this little click and drag button. So I click, I hold, and I drop it there. And now I've got a slidey knob. I'm also gonna turn on my grid. This is gonna mean that the controls I'm making are snapping, and that makes it easier to size and line things up consistently. So I right click, I choose grid, and I'll just turn on the 10 pixel grid. You can also choose larger sizes if you want. Resize this knob to be a nice size. Now I'm gonna need a few of these. I'm actually gonna need five knobs. I need a amount mix for each plugin. I need a threshold for each plugin, and I need an output gain knob for after the plugins have done their magic. So I'm just gonna duplicate this a few times. And finally duplicate one for the middle. For each of these knobs, I'm going to want to set a default value. You'll notice um, if I turn off edit mode, you can see a little dot. Most of the knobs in FL Studio have visual indicators of where the default is, but I'm going to want different defaults for a lot of these different things. So for uh, my amount knob, I want it to default on zero. So these two are good. For my threshold knob, I actually want it to default at 100. So I'm going to set both of those to 100. And this one, I'm going to set it to 50%. You'll notice when I right click on these knobs, I can't type in value, I can copy and paste. But if you activate the knob, you can then type in the value. So I'm gonna type in 50%, just deactivate it for now. Um, activating or deactivating the knobs in Patcher just means that they're visible for FL Studio's automation system. So if you ever want to automate something in Patcher and you can't seem to right click on that knob and create an automation clip, you may have to activate the knob first. I'm gonna go back to edit mode, and now I can right click on each of these and choose set default value. These ones are already set at the default value. That one needs to be set default value, and that one does. I'm also gonna rename all of these. This one is threshold. So is that one, this is the clipper threshold. This one here is the amount for the expander, and this one here is the amount for the clipper, and this one here is the output gain. Turn off edit mode. I'm gonna go back into my map here and you can see now on the surface, I've got some lovely dots here to connect. So here is my threshold for the expander and I've already set up this XYZ controller here to control the threshold. So I'm just gonna connect this knob to both the X and Y here. What we'll see if I open up both of these, by the way, alt click to open multiple plugins. This is the input gain. And this is the output. And remember to fake a threshold knob, we want to increase the input and decrease the output by the same amount. So if I pull this threshold knob down, you see both of them move. You see the input goes up, the output goes down. So what that does is it creates the illusion of a balanced sound, but it's still sending more gain into the Wave Shaper plugin. I'm gonna do the same over for this one is threshold. Um, by the way, I'm looking in the hint bar up at the top of FL Studio to tell what is what. I'm gonna connect this one down here to the X and Y of the threshold. And once again, I'm gonna test it to make sure that I got it right. There's the input, there's the output, and it works. Next up, I'm gonna connect the amount knob to the mix in the expander here. So if I test this out, as I move this amount knob, you should see this mix knob change. Perfect. Just gonna do the same thing now to the amount knob for the soft clipper and I'll double check it. Works perfectly. Final one to connect is the output gain, which should be by default at 50%, and you can turn your sound down or turn your sound up. Perfect. Now let's talk buttons. I'm going to need three buttons in my user interface. I'm gonna need an on switch for the expander. I'm gonna need an on switch for the clipper. Then I'm gonna need an overall bypass switch, which I think I'll put right here in the middle. So I right click, choose edit. 
Uh, once again, I'm going to open up the control creator, mess around with buttons. Um, you can see the different preview things here. I find buttons can be a little bit tricky to mess with, but fool around a bit and you can get something that works well. Over here, it's helpful to start with a preset, like a simple light button. You click on that preset and then you can change it how you like and then drag it in. Okay, I have made a fairly simple transparent button and the idea is when you mouse over it, it's going to outline in blue and you turn it on and it will be blue. Turn it off and it goes back to white. Go back to edit. This one I am going to rename bypass. Now, sometimes when you rename a button, if it already has a caption, naming it won't actually change how it appears. Naming it will just change how it appears in the hint panel for your map. So when I go here and I hover over it, my hint panel says bypass, but my user interface still says button six. So I'm gonna right click on it, go to properties and choose caption. And I'm gonna call it bypass and now you can see it's changed the visual I'm gonna duplicate this button twice and I'm gonna rename this one on off it's the on off uh, switch for the expander this one is also on off for the clipper if I turn off edit you can see each button is nice and clickable looks good I'm gonna connect them so this here is the overall bypass and it needs to go here to the bypass control which we set up so let's test this out. So I've got my wet bypass on top, my dry on the bottom. When I turn on the bypass, you can see the wet is off, the dry is still full volume. When I turn the bypass off, wet is now full volume, dry is off, working perfectly. I can close those up let's try another one. This should be on off for the expander. So I'm gonna connect it to the XYZ controller here to both the X and Y dots and let's test it out. Here's the wet on top, here's the dry. I click the button. When it's on, the wet is at full. When it's off, the dry is at full. Works perfectly. One more to test out and connect. I'm gonna connect that last button here to the XYZ controller, both dots. I'm gonna open up these fruity balances and I test my on off switch. Turn it on, the wet is at full. Turn it off, the dry is at full, perfect. Okay, we have everything we need for the basics of our controls and everything here in the map tab is now pretty much connected the way it should be. I think the final step here is to actually set up the expander and soft clipper in Fruity Wave Shaper. So I'm gonna open up the expander what I'm trying to do with an expander is I'm trying to do like the opposite of compression. Instead of the loudest peaks triggering the compressor and then we bring down the volume of that so that everything can get louder, I actually want some of my medium loud peaks to just get louder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to this top little dot here. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna choose half sign. Then I'm just gonna drag this handle up all the way. And that's the expander. How this works is with Wave Shaper, Input comes in along the bottom, along the X axis, and the output is along the top, the Y axis. So if I have just a straight diagonal line, that means that the input sound is unchanged when it goes to the output. When I drag this up here, what's happening is the very loudest peaks are unchanged. So I'm still getting my hard hitting transients, my loud drums, but all these sounds here kind of in this medium loud area are getting boosted a bit. And this is gonna give me a great volume increase without noticeably changing the character of my sound. You'll also notice that down here, the expansion of these quiet sounds is not as extreme as the expansion of these medium loud sounds, which means that an expander can help preserve the dynamic range of your track. Now we'll look at the soft clipper. The idea with soft clipping is a little bit different than expanding. Uh, I'm just gonna show you with a preset here. I'm gonna go soft clip three, very useful preset. It looks like this. You'll notice it turned down our pre-gain mix to 45%. So I'm just gonna right click and choose reset. It's now at full 100%. What's happening here is that any peaks that are really loud are getting softly rounded off now by the soft clipper instead of coming through at full volume. Instead of a compressor being triggered by those peaks and shrinking the volume down, what we're actually doing is just kind of chopping off those peaks. And chopping off those peaks introduces distortion. So rather than making all of our sounds quieter, we're just gonna distort the loudest sounds. And the reason for that is distortion, when used in small amounts, can be basically unnoticeable and can often add a little bit of energy to a track. But when we distort those peaks, that leaves us more headroom for increasing the makeup gain now. So both of these wave shapers are now gonna be working, doing different things, but both of them are gonna give us a pretty darn good boost in volume. 
Okay, I think we're done in the map tab. Time to move over to the surface tab and do some beautification, do some designing. We don't have that many controls in this plugin, so I'm just gonna shrink this up to the smallest I can get it. I'm gonna turn on edit mode, and I'm gonna start just adding some labels, um, start making things look beautiful, start lining things up. I think I want to have the expander on this side, bypass and output gain in the middle, and I wanna have the soft clipper on this side. I also want to have the threshold knob a little bit smaller, I think, than the amount knob because the threshold knob is not as important. So let's try that. The grid makes it easy to line this stuff up. So if my threshold is this big, my amount knob is one square bigger on this side and on this side. So it's easy to get a, a consistent look. Put my on off button above. I think I'll shrink up the size of these on off buttons as well. I don't think my output gain needs to be any bigger than those threshold knobs either. So I'll shrink it up a bit. My bypass button will go right in the middle. Looks pretty good. When I turn off edit mode and I mouse over things, it's already looking pretty nice just lining things up. Let's go back to edit mode. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start adding just some background color. I'm gonna add just a few little visual enhancements that make it look nice. So I go to bevel. And I like the rounded gradient rectangle. Just give things a nice sort of gradiented look. And you can see it fits in behind everything here. And I'm gonna change the color a bit. So I want to grab this blue color from the knob, but I want to just make it more desaturated, a little bit, uh, a little bit different. So I'm gonna close that out. Go to my threshold knob, colors. I think it's fill. Yeah, fill. And here, this number is gonna give me the, the hex code for the color. Just gonna copy that. And now here on this big bevel, I'm gonna to go to colors. I am going to paste it in, but I want to desaturate it a bit, darken it a bit. So I'm gonna turn off this lock icon. FL Studio likes to lock you to save colors. I don't like that. Let's see, I'm gonna make it a bit darker and I'm gonna turn down the saturation quite a bit. Can turn it down even more, maybe something that's a bit more bluish, maybe just slightly lighter. I think that's looking really nice. That's a great look. Okay, next I want a little bar up at the top, which is going to be um, room for my label, maybe my artist's name, whatever, the title of the plugin. So I'm going to add another bevel. I'll just do a default one, do a quick rough resize. And I like the idea of coloring this more on the white side of things. So I'll try and get that sort of tealish color again. I'm going to drag it almost all the way to white. I'm going to turn down the saturation as well. If I unclick and shrink it up, that's already looking pretty awesome. Uh, one thing that sometimes happens is these bevels can get in front of things that you don't want them to be in front of. That's the Z order. So if you ever find your your stuff is getting in the way or it's getting in front, right click, Z order, send to back. Now it's out of the way again. Okay, I wanna add some labels. So I'm going to add a label defaults. Let's rename this one expansion. And we will set our font height to, let's try 30. 30 looks a little big. Properties, font height, let's try 20. Ah, that's perfect. Okay, I'm going to get these bevels out of the way temporarily, just because sometimes when you're trying to move other things, you accidentally drag the bevel around. So let's line this up. Let's try and get consistent sizing so it's centered. I'm going to duplicate this and rename it Soft Clipping. Let's again line it up a bit. I think that's looking really nice. If I put these bevels back in place, okay can see I'm obviously going to need to drag down these things a bit to make them fit. Get the bevels out of the way again. I can click and drag and move entire elements all at once. That looks like it'll fit nicely. Maybe up one. Do the same over here. Make sure that these are relatively centered or in the right spot for our design. So if I actually get that bevel out of the way, shrink this up. From the edge, I'm one, two, three, four, five, six squares over. One, two, three, four, five. Almost perfectly six squares over. That worked out really well. I might move it in one more. Move that in one more. Try and line up these in the middle there. 
Here in the bevel, there is a single border option. This is real nice for accents. What it does, if I turn off edit, you can see it just adds a colored line. Really nice way to add accents. So I'm gonna right click on this, colors, and I'm gonna choose that accent color that I was using for the knob. And you can see it looks really nice. So if I start throwing this all together, shrink that up just a bit, oops. Shrink that up just a bit to fit nicely. How's that looking? I think that's looking really sharp. I'm gonna duplicate that one and put it around the soft clipping as well. And you can see how that very subtle thin line just lets each module of our plugin stand out a little bit on its own. Now, I think the last thing we need to do is put some kind of title up here. So I am going to go back to edit mode. I'm gonna add a nice big label. I'm gonna name this loudness tools. Let's change our font height. 34, does that look? That's nice and big, I like that. Let's change our color. I'm gonna do my accent color. When I put that up there, it looks looks really nice, I think. Try and center that relatively for now. Now, you may have noticed some patcher plugins have these cool icons and stuff from FL Studio. That's a little bit tricky to get in, but I'll show you the method that worked for me. What you need to do is you need to open up your FL Studio installation and find a file called IL Glyphs. So here in FL20, this is my uh, installation. I am going to look for IL glyphs and you can see already I just searched ILGL and it showed up it's IL glyphs ex dot IL font I am going to copy it don't want to mess with what's installed in my program but I am going to go to my desktop now paste a copy on the desktop and I'm going to rename it I'm going to take off this IL font ending and I'm going to go TTF this tells my Windows system that this is a true type font now I can open it up in my font preview and I can choose the install button. Once you've installed your IL Glyphs font, we're gonna go into Control Creator. Uh, the only way I've managed to make this work is with the button creation. I think there are other ways to do it, but I do it with button creation. Over here under font name, I choose IL Glyphs. And now I will be able to put in the, all those different characters from FL Studio into my patcher plugin. So I'm gonna make a transparent button that is just gonna be the text and it's gonna be part of my logo or part of my title at the top of the patcher. So I'm gonna go um, sober outline transparent, I think will be good. I guess I want the color for now. I'll just set it to, to white and I will drag it in. Now there is a built-in Windows tool called Character Map, so you'll need to open up that. You can do it by your start menu, type C-H-A-R-M-A-P. Here's Character Map. Um, find your IL Glyphs font that you just installed. Uh, anything you want here. Let's say I want, I really like this one here because it's got the quiet sounds that then expand to get louder. So I'm gonna double click, it's here. I'm gonna choose Copy. Then when I go here, I can right click on this button that I made. I can go properties, caption, I can hit paste or control V. It appears as a square here, but I hit enter and now I have my little icon. So you can get any one of those icons, you just have to copy paste them out of character map into a button in Patcher. I haven't managed to get to work for text, but I think some people have, so it's worth a try. I'm gonna go properties, font height. Let's set our font height nice and big. Oh, 34 is still too small. Let's try 45. I am gonna once again copy the font color for my threshold knob and I'm gonna set this font color to that nice blue. And this can go up here. If ever the grid is bugging, you can just turn grid to none and then, oops. You can see I'm click, it clicks the bevel instead of my thing, but then you can move things without the grid messing you up. Put these back, turn off edit, change the size. That's looking pretty fantastic. I think my final thing to do is put my name on it. I'll get these bevels out of the way too so I can uh, center these ones a bit. And 
and there's my plugin. Now the final step before we look at what this plugin can do is to save it. Don't forget that. So click the drop down menu up here in the patcher bar uh, and choose save preset as and you can save it in this default folder spot. But one of the other things that can be handy is you can save this preset in your plugin database and then it will appear in your actual effect list right on your master track. You don't have to click patcher and then choose this preset. So that can also be really handy. Let's test out how this sounds and why we went to all this work to build something like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna load up the patcher and I'm gonna put in this limiter. The reason for that is I like sometimes to use the graph here to monitor the peaks of the waveform, see what it, what things look like. And I'm going to add patcher. You can do patcher within patcher. And I'm going to load loudness tools preset that we just made. So what we can do if we connect the loudness tools to fruity limiter and then fruity limiter out, we will be able to visually see the changes that we're making here. So let's see what we're gonna do. I've got a rough mix work in progress here and we'll just play around with expansion first and then soft clipping and we'll see what each change is doing to the waveform over here. So you can see we've got lots of peaks and troughs. We've got the transients of the drums. I'm gonna turn on expansion and just turn it up all the way and you'll see that it's gonna make things much louder. So you see overall it's actually brought up the volume a lot but you'll notice that these highest peaks are not as affected as like these medium volume peaks which have all been brought up a ton and that just right away just turning on that expansion amount all the way gives us a ton of volume because with it turned down all the way turn it up much louder Hear the difference? All right, let's mess with soft clipping now. The idea of soft clipping, as I mentioned before, is that the, the tips of these peaks, if we can distort them, if we can chop them off, that'll give us more headroom. And hopefully the distortion won't be too distracting or it will add to the track rather than take away from it. So let's play around a bit with that. Turn it on. Turn up the amount all the way. And already you can see, as soon as I turn up the amount all the way, these highest peaks are now down here. Already just gave me some more headroom. I'm just gonna play around with the threshold knob just a bit to give myself some more headroom, but you'll notice that you go too far with the threshold on either of these, on the expander or the soft clipper, it's gonna be obviously distorting. So as I bring down the threshold, watch how those peaks get just a little bit lower. Already hearing some distortion though go more extreme to see how much it brings down those waveforms but that's pretty extreme and very audible keep it subtle and now that I've done these manipulations to the volume I can bring up the output gain So look at that waveform now, barely clipping this limiter. In fact, you know what, I'll turn off the 0.2 dB safety so we can get a little bit louder, but it's barely clipping there. We've gotten so much more volume and we've barely impacted the character of the sound. To get that same kind of volume boost from just a single compressor, it would mangle your sound, it would muddy the bass, it would muddy the transients. In fact, I'll show you, let's, uh, let's go back to Patcher here and let's add a loudness analyzer. This here is the free Yulian loudness meter. It's very handy. Let's bypass our loudness tools and just see what the volume of the track is without them on. Pretty quiet. It's uh, 14 integrated. Put on the loudness tools. So I turn off my bypass, let's hit go. We went from 14 to 7.7, .7. much louder, 7.4.
That is a huge amount more loudness. And that is without mangling the sound. Let's throw in a compressor in here and see if we can get to 7.5, 7.4 without using these loudness tools. So I will add another limiter here and I will just take off this input and drop it onto that one. So here's my loudness meter. Here's my fruity limiter, which I'm gonna use as a compressor. Set a fairly high ratio. Let's do like a nine, 10 to one. Let's bring down this threshold and see how loud we can get it. So the purple is where it's uh, detecting it's too loud and it's bringing it down. And then we use our makeup gain to make the whole track louder. compressing pretty hard and I'm still at pretty darn quiet 10.6 10.7 see if we can get it louder let's really push it 9.3 let's reset it and see this is compressed like crazy 8.1 8.0. So 8.0 is the loudest we can get it. And with our loudness tools, we actually had it to 7.5. And I'll do a quick little comparison here. The loudness tools are louder, but they still sound better. Notice when we were running it through the fruity limiter that the drum sounds suddenly lost a lot of their power, a lot of their punch, and the bass, the sub bass especially, starts to sound muddy. So I'll hit play on the track and I'll swap between the two and you'll be able to compare. This is with a compressor. And now to the loudness tools. Drums have more power here with the loudness tools. Yeah, that's crazy. What we built in Patcher is louder, and yet the sound is more transparent. We're getting more volume out for less sacrifice. But that's not exactly the fairest comparison. That's using a fairly simple uh, single band compressor. Let's try something that's specifically meant for adding more volume like Maximus. I'll attach Maximus into my little plugin chain here. We'll try out some of the different presets. We'll mess around a little bit with this and we'll also check our loudness using the loudness meter. Let's go with max loudness too. That sounds promising. We'll see how loud this can get it. Ooh, that's loud. 6.6. 6.5. Okay, Maximus is louder. But also notice how Maximus colors the sound. Notice how um, the bass is way more prominent. So you gotta watch out when you're mastering using presets like this in order to really crank out that kind of loudness. They're really coloring the sound. If I go back to our loudness tools, it will sound a little less crisp, a little bit more mid heavy, but that's actually truer to the original mix. As I go back to Maximus, you're gonna really hear that, that bass get colorful and prominent. really colors the sound. When I'm working in Maximus, I often like to use this Clear Master preset as a starting point. Let's try that. Clear Master is going to color the sound quite a bit less, but you won't get as much volume out of it. So notice that the sound is a lot less colored. Um, it doesn't really change the characteristics of the bass as much, but we're also not as loud. I'm going to turn on the Master Compressor. A little bit more compression here. Increase my post gain. See how loud I can get. So we've gotten pretty loud with Maximus, um, but I don't want to push it much more than that because that's already coloring the sound. Depending on how good the headphones or the speakers you're listening on are, you may have noticed that especially the snare sounds flabby. I'll do a quick comparison. I'll jump between Maximus and our loudness tools, and you'll notice that the snare does sound better with the loudness tools. Listen to the snare.
The snare has way more thwack when we're just using the expander and the soft clipper versus when we compress things. Now, finally, the real magic happens when you use expansion and soft clipping and then you compress. So let's get rid of some of this and let's add a Maximus in here after the loudness tools. I'm gonna to go to the clear master preset. I'm also in the loudness tools. I'm just gonna set the output gain back to default. And let's see what kind of volume we can get here using these two tools in combination to squeeze as much volume as we can out without compromising our mix. Now we're already at 7.0, 7.1. That's really loud and it sounds good. It sounds good. I'm gonna take down the soft clipping just a bit because I'm noticing it's messing with the kick. I'm gonna turn on the master compressor here and squeeze a little more volume up. We're at 7.2. Seven point oh. It's a little over compressed for my liking, but it's pretty darn clear sounding. Now remember that this is not in any way a replacement for an actual mastering engineer who knows what they're doing. This is something that can help you really get a bit more commercial level volume without sacrificing too much of your mix elements. But of course, if you are releasing music on some major platform, you're actually going to want to get an outside set of ears to help you with the mastering stage. Somebody who has got more experience and also who just can listen to your track with fresh mind. Because by the time you get to this point, your ears are so fatigued with listening to this track over and over again that you're not going to be very objective. But if you're just producing at home, you want to get some crazy loudness before you put this on SoundCloud, I think these loudness tools are going to be super helpful for you. Good luck.